There's been plenty of times when the guests did a bit of an overreach, and as a result, Joe Rogan went off on them, or both sides came off looking bad. We'll break it down for you. But before we do that, go ahead and do us a favor by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. Do you want to win an iPhone 12? Maybe a MacBook Pro? How about $500 cash? All you have to do is comment the secret hidden message somewhere in this video. That's it. Oh, and leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep affording these giveaways. Winner will be announced at the last day of each month. Thanks for watching and good luck. Number eight, Candace Owens. And Donald Trump understood that in, in a way that I didn't. And you don't I thought. think we have to care about the environment? Like, what no, do you no, not even a little bit. Like, no. Not even a little bit? <laughs> no. Do you, okay, let me let me clarify this. I don't throw trash on the ground. Like, okay. I'm, I'm not saying, like, we need to, like, you know, trash the environment. Like, um, but do I believe in climate change? No. Global warming. The debate on this topic is basically never ending, even though it shouldn't be much of a debate at all. That's politics and greed for you, ladies and gentlemen. When Joe Rogan had political activist Candace Owens on his podcast, she noted that she didn't believe in global warming, which would have been enough to set Joe off. You don't believe in climate change. No, well, I think the climate always changes, I guess is what I should say. Do I believe that this is like, you know, an issue that, um, is being that, that is fa global warming, which they've changed conveniently. They got rid of the word once scientists started disproving it. Now they only say cli climate change. But then she noted that she wasn't informed on the subject and just didn't believe in it outright. Rogan went to town on her and noted that she shouldn't voice an opinion like that if she wasn't well read on it and cited how just about 100% of scientists in the world today believe in global warming. And that's not nothing, especially in the world today. Owens definitely got owned here and we should praise Rogan for that. Um, no, I, I I think that that was just a way to extract dollars from Americans. I don't at all believe they had no actionable plan. It was great for Trump to get out of that deal. It was terrible. Okay, but this is an incredibly complicated subject. Right. And if you would have to talk to a bunch of different scientists right. and see how they gather data and see what they understand about CO2 levels and what's the danger of them right. and what can combat it and what could not. Have you done all this or no. do you so take think... this flippant opinion no, it's, based it's, listen, on the I'm party not, line? This, is not, this wouldn't be the hill I died on. Versus what he did in our final entry which is something he should be chastised for and actually was on his own show number seven Nick DiPaolo the, what we actually know about the data and where it's coming from and who, how these people are doing this and how they're setting these things up yeah that guy the comic that you and I talked about mm -hmm. um, again that clip of this Russian who is a former KGB guy who defected to this country explaining how it works as Joe Rogan has sadly proven time and time again, he's not afraid to get political, for better and for worse. But let's show you a time when he actually took the right side of a major matter. During the 2016 election season, Joe had Nick DiPaolo, a comedian and actor on the show, and asked whether Trump honestly was a bigger liar than Hillary Clinton. DiPaolo stated that it was just the media hating Trump. Well, I don't know about that. I, I don't think he's working with them to undermine democracy, but I definitely think they've got some business dealings. I mean, they were offering well, him yeah, the Trump. Well, yeah, but that's not illegal. The penthouse and Trump. That's power. not illegal. None of that is illegal. Don't take that from me. Take that from Alan Dershowitz. I don't. He's smarter than both of us. I'm not saying it's illegal, but I don't think that he was honest about that. He said, I don't do any dealings with Russia. I don't have any business with Russia. And he definitely did. That's just not true. Well, we'll see and tried to spin things to make it clear that Trump was the better candidate. Joe Rogan fired back, though, stating that DiPaolo was doing whataboutism, or a way of deflecting blame by stating the faults of others versus actually answering the question, which, as we would find out, was a huge part of the Trump campaign, as well as his supporters using it to prop up their candidate. Do you know what a whataboutism is? A whataboutism? Yeah, when someone talks about something, and instead of refuting it with facts, they go, yeah, well, what about Hillary? What about Bill? Bill did it, too. What about this? What about but, that? Are you that's gonna, a, you're gonna that's tell a Aboutism. Uh, that's what I just committed. That was a what about Because you were saying that Hillary lied. But you we both to, agree. But you're making my point. You're going me, to the Washington me, Post. Okay, well, that's just Jamie pulled up the Independent. No, I, I, we okay. could go. And is now used by many to deflect issues. To be clear, Joe was in the right to call him out for this. But Rogan's own political views have gotten a bit muddier over time, including praising people who are doing the same thing that Trump did, which, as we just showed you, was something Rogan chastised at the time. Number six, Adam Conover. Uh, I also know from my trans friends that the uh, the effects that the hormones have on your body are like really profound, you know, like really, really profound. Like we're not uh, like um, 
uh, to a surprising degree, right? The transgender issue is one that is still very much a hot topic. Many in the US are feeling the heat of this topic in a variety of ways, and a variety of laws are being made to try and stop transgenders from having various rights, operations, and so on. Joe Rogan brought on comedian and TV host Adam Conover to discuss the issue. Um, there's no reason to give kids hormones, and there's no reason to decide before a person's frontal lobe is completely full completely fully developed, which doesn't even take place till like 25. And Adam made his thoughts clear when he noted that there should be genetic confirmation and hormone therapy for those kids who don't know who they are. But Joe was very quick to point out issues with that philosophy. Mainly, this puts all the power in the parents' hands. And once this therapy is had, it can't be reversed. Plus, the suicide rate for transgender people is still incredibly high, both pre-op and post-op. The research I've seen is that trans kids from uh, a young age, uh, they they are incredibly consistent in their, you know, when they're expressing their gender identity. Um, okay, but and that's that, a big generalization. And, and that, You're and talking about the, a lot of human beings. Because the people feel horrified at what will be done to them or what does happen to them. This is another one where it's good to know that Joe Rogan was on the right side of things. But in truth, you would have liked it more if you were more consistent on issues that matter. Number five, Mark Gordon and Brian Dunning. So if you're going to put someone on sort of a preventative protocol for, mm -hmm. for COVID, you would recommend quercetin, and you can get it. We just, I just bought some on right. Amazon after you brought it up because yep. I wasn't taking quercetin. Yeah. Um, quercetin at what dose? Well, what we started off just for you know, for daily use because the benefit of quercetin is it drops the inflammatory cytokines. One time he invited on Dr. Mark Gordon to the show and Gordon started talking about a miracle supplement that would help people not get drunk. At first Joe laughed it off and said it was bull, though he admitted to not being a medical professional. As such, he basically gave his blessing for the supplement. This led to another medical doctor, Brian Dunning, coming onto the show to chew out Joe for not standing up to Gordon and calling him a liar. Um, it increases mitochondria, so you produce more cells, so you produce more energy, ATP. That was what we were using for, and it was 500 milligrams twice a day. And zinc was 15 to 30 milligrams twice a day. And in the past 20 years, I've been sick 13 days. And what I started seeing in our population, because we do a monthly questionnaire to our patient population, and we have two questions about allergies and about uh, infections or colds. And as Dunning made his case, it was clear just how bad the goof Rogan did was. Because while it's true that he's not a medical professional, he still has a thing called common sense. He should have known that any miracle supplement that isn't widely known about is likely snake oil. He got caught with his hand in the cookie jar there, and he paid for it. Number four, Andrew Hill. Not or watching someone who's not a 90-year-old guy with a, with a, with a, a, um, a polite student. Right. You know, th there are different... Uh, right, that's why I want to see some real shit. I've never seen it. I've, I've every single one of those. I mean, I've seen some judo demonstrations where there was a one that we played recently was amazing. There was this old judo, but the way he moved was logical. I mean, I, I understood that what he was doing was effective. Yeah. Next up, a topic that we know Joe Rogan is knowledgeable at: martial arts. After all, he's with the UFC and probably will be for some time. And he's talked about martial arts a lot on his podcast. One time, he had a scientist on his show named Andrew Hill, who revealed that he was a practitioner of Aikido. Joe acknowledged that as a very interesting martial art, and yet said that he didn't really feel it matched up to all the various other martial arts because of its techniques and beliefs. Over the face. That's, that's reality. This shit doesn't work. And there's, it's a beautiful art to practice. It looks cool, but it's like as far as like efficacy and actual grappling against us, I just think as far as an actual martial art, it's one of the least effective in real practice. Hill bit back by noting that the creator of the art was able to take down foes just by shifting their balance. Eventually, Rogan brought up a video highlighting an Aikido master losing to a grappler, basically sealing his argument. Number three, Brian Redman. When you're the guest on a show like the Joe Rogan Experience, there are basic guidelines to follow. Aside from don't be a jerk, another is don't try and make yourself the focus of the show. A great example of this was Brian Redman, whom fans of the show will remember from the very early years of the program. Brian is a stand-up comedian, and he very much loved coming onto the show, and Rogan clearly liked him due to his numerous appearances at the time. As time went on, though, Brian used the show more and more to highlight himself and his comedic standing. Even at the end of one podcast, segueing from a topic to talk about a review he got during a comedy show. Clearly, he was trying to make everything about him, and Rogan caught him doing that one too many times. So he called him out on it, and they argued about it over several episodes. So thus, he wasn't let back on. 
Number two, Jamie Kilstein. Because you're, we're going way, way, way back. The, the real issue, this is like a year before, more than a year before yeah. everything went sideways. Oh, we're yeah. Talking about. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, what, yeah. what went sideways and why? Okay. So you're this super progressive vegan guy, but what went sideways? So um, an ex of mine, um, an ex of mine, uh, I'm trying to think about like how much I can say, um, started, um, it was weird. Like, uh, girls I was dating, like she would kind of like pop up and be like following them on like social media. And I kind of was like, all right, it's a little weird. This one almost hurts to talk about because of how bad this person wanted to make his case. And Joe Rogan, among others, just wasn't having it. This all started with a joke that Jamie had done during a sketch about assaulting women. Not that he was doing it, to be clear, but he was making a joke about the topic. And Joe wasn't amused one bit, though he did try and give him the chance to clear up the joke and reveal his motivations for it. I have a, I've had a girlfriend for a year. It's like a very healthy, wonderful relationship. Um, years after all this, I guess what happened was one of these girls um, essentially started to try to find any girl who has been pissed off by me before. And they found enough for an article that um, I think like two articles came out. Um, I left Citizen Radio because the show was getting a ton of complaints. Jamie noted that it was meant to showcase certain things and even stated that being murdered is better than having to go through that assault. Hearing that, Joe lost it and called him crazy because you can get help and heal from an assault, whereas death is death. And while you can't confirm this, we highly doubt that Jamie Kilstein asked a bunch of women what their thoughts were on the joke. Call it a hunch. Number one, Milo Yiannopoulos. In addition to your language what? policing, trying he's to... trying to... Files? No, trying to go on this You were witch... the one who was anti-pedophile I told you it wasn't... The... Yeah, I was well, after I lost my virginity. I was How in my teens. You? I was in my teens. Fourteen. I was in my teens. Something like 14. something like that. That's what you I said. Was Fourteen. In my, I was teens. Let's finish it out with one where both sides got some egg on their face. Milo Yiannopoulos is a British commentator who talked with Joe about various topics and noted that Americans and other cultures are truly influenced by the Christian faith because they're technically Christian nations. Life, however old you were, you've never seen a 15 year old girl you thought was hot. Yeah, when I was 15. No, when you were 25. When you were 25. I'm not retarded, dude. When you were 25, when you were 30, no. you would have seen girls about 15 you thought were hot. No, of I thought they were little did. kids. No. However, Joe fought back hard against that and occasionally tripped over his own words in trying to prove that it's more about cultural influence than faiths and religion. It's true that the US was technically born a Christian nation, hence why One Nation Under God is used in key documents and the Pledge of Allegiance, but we've far since grown beyond that in various ways. But if you're going to defend the topic like Joe tried to, you definitely need to come off knowing the topic, which he didn't. If you're 14, born like this, you're born this way. You're born, born, <laughs> born a dreary nitpicker. Um, <laughs> no, you're trying to make it so I'm a fucking creeper like you. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not I'm in the 14 year olds. How I'm... dare you, sir? <laughs> and there you have it, everyone. A look at the times when Joe Rogan didn't exactly get along with his guests, and certain words were exchanged as a result. Do you remember these particular incidents on his podcast? Which ones do you think are the most infamous of the lot? Will you still be listening to Joe Rogan despite his own controversies? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.